Newton Raphson's algorithm is one of the numerical methods used to solve equations that cannot be solved algebraically. In this video, I'll try to explain how the algorithm works for a single equation and a set of two nonlinear equations. Let's begin with the single equation. The objective is to find the value of x for which the function x square is equal to 2. Let's begin with an assumption, say x is equal to 0.5, which is definitely not the answer, but let's try to improve our guess subsequently. Plugging 0.5 into the function x square, we get 0.25. So the difference between the required answer 2 and our guess is delta y, which is equal to 1.75. Now to improve our guess, we approximate the function with a linear line, that is, we draw a tangent to the parabola whose slope is the derivative at x is equal to 0.5. We do this because for a linear line, we can easily find the change in x corresponding to the change in y just by dividing the slope of the line, which is of course the derivative. Now the next corrected or improved approximation is obtained by adding this correction factor delta x to our previous assumption, which is 0.5. So this number becomes our new assumption, and we repeat the same process again. Find delta y do the linear approximation, find the correction factor del x, add it to the previous assumption. We repeat the process till the error becomes negligibly small. So x is equal to 1.414 can be taken as the final answer. Now let's see how the algorithm functions for a system of two nonlinear equations. Here's our system. For a two-dimensional input, we obtain a two-dimensional output. The objective is for what values of x1 and x2, the system gives minus 1 and 1 as the output. As we did before, let's make an initial assumption. But remember, now we have two inputs, so let our assumption be, say, 1 and 1. Plugging it into our system of equations, we get 1.84 and 1.54. Since we are working in two dimensions, let me represent them as arrows in 2D space. So the difference between the required answer minus 1, 1 and our guess is delta y. Here's the fun part. The linear approximation in the 1D case was just a linear line whose slope is the derivative of the function at that point. But in two dimensions, the linear approximation of a system is given by the Jacobian. If you have no idea what a Jacobian is, please check out Grant's videos during his time in Khan Academy. I have added the link in the description. But I'll try to give a very brief explanation about its functioning. Here's our nonlinear system. The idea behind the linear approximation, in general, is that when we zoom in hard enough at a given point, the nonlinear system appears to be a linear one. So the Jacobian at any given point gives us the linear transform corresponding to the zoomed in version of the system at that point. So the linear approximation corresponding to our assumption 1, 1 is given by the Jacobian. We do this approximation because we can find the change in x, namely delta x, corresponding to delta y just by applying the inverse of the Jacobian. This is identical to dividing by the slope in the one-dimensional case. But remember, the delta x and y here are two-dimensional vectors. Now the next corrected or improved approximation is obtained by adding this correction factor delta x to our previous assumption 1, 1. Now x1 becomes our new assumption, and we repeat the same process. Find f of x1. find delta y, perform the linear approximation by finding the Jacobian, apply its inverse to find the correction factor del x, and add it to the previous assumption. 
we repeat this process till the correction factor becomes negligibly small. So minus 1.99 and 1.4 can be taken as a final answer. Thank you and do consider subscribing.